Hello students, this is Learn Easy Tutorial, your online learning companion. In this video, I am going to show you a simple and easy way to balance a chemical equation. Before we move on to that, let's see what is a chemical equation. A chemical equation is a short representation of a chemical reaction. It has reactants and products which are separated by an arrow symbol. We write reactants and products using their symbols of formulas. The direction of the arrow will help us to understand the direction in which the reaction proceeds. It also gives us information such as the temperature, pressure, catalyst present, etc. But these chemical equations have their own limitations. We can't represent the speed of the reaction in the chemical equation. We cannot determine the exact concentration, mass or quantity of the reactants used in the reaction. We also won't know the time taken by the reaction or when the reaction stopped. Now let me show you how to write a chemical equation. Let's take the reaction. Magnesium ribbon burns to form magnesium oxide. Here, one of the reactant is definitely magnesium ribbon. Now the other reactant here is oxygen. This is because oxygen supports burning. So let's write the equation. First, we will write the symbol for magnesium, Mg. Now we will write the symbol for oxygen, O2. Since they both are reacting with each other, we will connect them with a plus symbol. The product formed here is magnesium oxide, MgO. Now, we can connect the reactants and product with the arrow symbol. This is not a reversible reaction. We can draw the arrow with its head pointing towards the product. The equation that you see here doesn't have equal number of atoms of each element on the left and right side. This kind of equation is known as skeletal equation. Now we have to balance this chemical equation. In order to balance it, we will use a two-step process which we will be repeating until the number of atoms on both sides for all the elements are balanced. First make a note of the number of atoms of each element in both sides. On the left side, one atom of magnesium, two atoms of oxygen. While on the right side, I have one atom of magnesium and one atom of oxygen. In the step two, start balancing one element at a time and repeat step one and two until all elements are balanced. The magnesium atoms on both sides are equal, but there is a difference in number of oxygen atoms. So what I will do first is multiply 2 on the right side so that the number of oxygen atoms become equal on both sides. Since I have multiplied 2 to oxygen, the corresponding compound on the right side should also be multiplied with 2. So the right side becomes 2 MgO now. Now we will go back to step 1. We will recheck the number of atoms on the left and right side. The number of atoms of magnesium on the left is 1 while the right is 2. The number of atoms of oxygen on the left and right are currently 2. So we need to balance magnesium right now. I'll multiply 2 to magnesium on the left side. Now we will repeat step 1 again. Number of magnesium atoms on the left side and right side currently is 2. And the oxygen number of oxygen atoms on left and right are also 2. This means that there are equal number of atoms on both sides.
that is the equation is now balanced uh, our final equation is 2mg plus O2 giving 2mg O. We need to balance a chemical equation because an unbalanced equation doesn't obey the law of conservation of mass. According to the law, mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Therefore, we cannot have different number of atoms on left and right side of the equation. A balanced chemical equation obeys laws of conservation of mass. Let's see another example to balance a chemical equation. The reaction here is thermal decomposition of lead nitrate to form lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. The formula for lead nitrate is PbNO3 twice for lead oxide is PbO, nitrogen dioxide NO2, and oxygen O2. Since there is only one reactant, we will not add the plus symbol on the left side. Whereas here, there are multiple products, so we will connect them with the plus symbol. The reactants and products here, I'm going to add this arrow symbol to connect them. Now let's take the number of atoms on the left and right. On the left side, there is one atom of lead, two atoms of nitrogen, and six atoms of oxygen. Here you have to multiply the value outside the bracket with its subscript. On the right side, we have one atom of lead, 1 plus 2 plus 2, 5 atoms of oxygen, one, 1 atom of nitrogen. Initially, the number of lead, number of atoms of lead on the left and right are equal. Number of atoms of nitrogen on the left is 2, whereas on the right is 1. Therefore, I will multiply two on the right side and also add two to the compound on the right side. Now back to step one. The number of atoms of lead remains the same. Number of atoms of nitrogen have been balanced on both sides. Number of oxygen on the left side is 6, whereas on the right side is 7. One of the number is even and one of the number is odd. Since I have a compound which has only one oxygen atom, I'll multiply 2 to that. So here we have to multiply 2 to lead also. Now back to step 1. Number of atoms of lead on the left side is 1 and on the right side is 2. In order to balance it, I will multiply 2 on the left side. If I add 2 to the compound, the number of atoms of all the elements will change. So P number of atoms of lead becomes 2, nitrogen becomes 2 into 2, 4. Oxygen becomes 6 into 2, 12. And on the right side, number of atoms of lead is 2. Number of atoms of nitrogen is 2. Number of atoms of oxygen is 8. Here the nitrogen atom on the left and right side are not balanced. If I multiply 2 to the nitrogen on the right side, I'll have to multiply 4 to the compound on the right side. So right now, number of atoms of lead on the right side is 2, nitrogen is 4, oxygen is 2 plus 8 plus 2, which is 12. As we can see, both the atoms on the left and right are currently balanced. 
So our final equation is 2PbNO3 twice giving 2PbO plus 4NO2 plus O2. The key points for the question what are the characteristics of a chemical equation is as follows. It provides information such as reactants and products of the reaction. It shows us the direction of the reaction. We can specify the physical state of the reactants and products. By looking at the equation, we can understand the conditions required for the reaction such as temperature, pressure, catalyst, etc. Key points for the question, what are the limitations of a chemical equation? The chemical equation does not show the speed of the reaction. It doesn't specify the concentration, mass or quantity of the reactants used in the equation. We cannot specify the time taken by the reaction or when the reaction stops. Other than pressure, temperature and catalyst, we cannot specify any other necessary conditions required for the reaction. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. If you find this video useful, do like, share and subscribe. See you soon with a new video. Happy learning!